Excellent. And uh, welcome everybody to this session on uh, on on Sam. Uh, I thought I wanted to start with a, with a quick poll. Uh, who is actually who has heard uh, before uh, of of Sam? Most of you. Great. That's good news. Who has worked before with Sam? Who has worked before in 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 used it uh, in your organization a bit? You've looked at it, uh, but okay, okay. So kind of half of the audience. Okay, that's that's very good news. Um, so the idea for today uh, for this session is actually twofold. Uh, we want to give you uh, a bit of an uh, an overview of what SAM is all about. Uh, explain you a bit the the different uh, the different elements of the model to give you to make sure that everybody is aligned and on the same page. And then we also uh, want to give you some heads up on uh, the version 2.0, 2 .2 2.1 actually, that's coming out soon. Uh, date still to be determined, but it will be quite quite soon. Uh, to warn, to 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 uh, ease everybody already, the the release of version 2.1 is not going to include any major changes to the core model itself. It's more about supporting uh, aids that will help you to to facilitate your lives in applying it, in in using it. Uh, and making sure that we can all uh, work together uh, on, on, on using it. Uh, that's, that's some of the highlights already, uh, some spoilers. Uh, but it, so it will not uh, really change the, the actual core of the model. I think the, the stability of the model is, is quite important. We'll come to that, uh, to that uh, uh, during the presentation as well. But so that's the idea for, for, for today. Um, so uh, who are we actually? Um, so Seba? Yeah, so I'm uh, Seba or Sebastian Leesten. So uh, we're both from Belgium. So there's this uh, great security consulting company called uh, Torium. Obviously, I'm biased. I found it. So, uh, <laughs> uh, and then um, I'm also doing a lot of lots of trainings uh, last couple of years on threat modeling and other stuff with, uh, with the training subsidiary, Data Protection Institute, and then. Um, I started uh, the Belgian chapter in 2005, or less, uh, some time ago. Uh, got involved in, in some OWASP, uh, other OWASP, I would say, initiatives. Uh, but I spent most of my time lately, I would say, spent my some side, but OWASP cycles on OWASP some uh, together with but but also with a great group of other people that uh, work together on that. Yeah. Yes, exactly, because actually. We're together uh, doing the talk right now, but actually we have a, a team of core uh, contributors to this project that have been working already for years on this on this uh, on this project. So what you're seeing is 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 the result of uh, all these people working together and collaborating much more than than just the two of us uh, stand, standing here. That's important. Uh, yeah. So myself also been involved in in OWASP for like I think 15 years or so. Uh, have been uh, in the some uh, project since since uh, OWASP took it over because it actually started from uh, from Pavir Chandra that uh, defined it back in 2009. But since OWASP took it over, have been involved as a co-leader together with Sebastian, uh, and I'm working professionally for PwC, just professionally. Uh, well, but my, my passion is definitely <laughs> just professionally, but just that's not why I'm here. I'm just here to, to explain the, everything that I do for, for some rather than uh, my, my professional career. All right. Uh, so let's, uh, get started. As, as I said before, um, so the, the session for today will be in two parts. First of all, some overview where we will explain a bit more the model, but also some extra elements that are there that we've defined that are available to you just to make sure that, that you know how to navigate through, through the entire model and different uh, instruments. Uh, and then looking further into SAM 2.1, uh, that's, that, that will be released soon. All right. Let's get started. Um, so, uh, so Sam, most of you are familiar with it. Uh, that, that's what I, that's what I, uh, saw during, during the quick poll. But so the, 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 the most important idea for Sam is to give you some kind of a, an instrument to actually measure, uh, and reason about uh, software uh, maturity or software security in an organization. And it's supposed to be very versatile. So it can be applied to whatever technology that you're using in your company, whatever software development method that you're using in your company. It can be uh, applied to whatever organization you are, whether you're a very small tech-oriented tech organization or a very big multinational organization. It doesn't really matter. It will give you the 
the, the framework to reason about software security in your organization. In that sense, it's also not a technical uh, piece of uh, piece of piece of work. It's more like a, a framework or structure that can that that that's helpful for you to reason about it. Um, it's it's uh, supposed to be measurable, and we'll come back to how we can measure things. Uh, but actually, there's there's a clear way how how we can measure, and that's actually quite important because you can measure at one point in time, but you can also measure progress in an organization over time, and can also use these measurements to compare different organizations or different units. So being able to measure how you're doing is actually quite important, and that's actually a core part of, of what SAM is about, being able to measure where you are and where you want to go. Uh, it provides you uh, with uh, pathways on how you can improve. It provides you with suggestions on what you could do as your type of organization, in which we call what we call roadmaps. Um, so it, it can also help you or support you in defining what's the best way to move forward as an organization. That's what SAM is all it's all about. Um, um, there's there's actually quite a, a quite a long history of SAM, and as as we just heard in the previous uh, keynote by Jessica, great things take time. This is actually a kind of an example of this, I would say. Uh, but but uh, SAM is already there since uh, 2009 or even before that. Uh, the first version of, of SAM, at the time it was called OpenSAM, uh, was released by Parveer Chandra, 2009. Uh, at that time it had a lot of traction and we uh, immediately community saw there was great value in that type of model because it was not really existing at the time. Um, over time, different versions have been released. Some versions were really breaking the model. Other versions were just, uh, well, improving what there was, but without breaking the model. Because you have to realize if uh, organizations are using this model to measure what they're doing, if you would be changing the model itself every six months, it will be impossible to work with. So one of the key elements for OWASP SAM is to, to provide you with a stable model that you can use in your organization over time. And it's, it, that it's not changing uh, every six months. So stability is actually quite an important element of this of this model. Uh, but so we did change, for instance, the the measuring system in uh, SAM 1.5 in 2017. We changed how scores are calculated, and that actually had quite an impact on on people using organization using it. And actually, quite a big change was done in SAM 2.0, which was released in 2020. We actually changed the core structure of the model. Before we had four business functions, we went to five business functions and we really changed it because it was really uh, very obvious that we needed to uh, provide way better support for uh, modern development styles. Uh, not water file, style, water file development, but more like agile development, DevOps development. And with the version 1.0 or 1.1 or 1.5, it was more difficult. There were some key feature or key practices that were really lacking in the model. And that's why we defined 2.0 that came out 2020. Uh, now in 2023, 2.1 will come out. But actually, uh, what, what you're not seeing here is that, uh, we are using, uh, uh, intermediate versions. We're using semantic versioning with the model. So actually, we have released in the meantime also 2.0.1, 2.0.2, 2.0.3. You don't see that here, but it's not that we've been sitting still with the, with the project. All right. Uh, so that's that. Let's, uh, look a bit into the structure of the model. Um, overall, the structure of the model looks like this, that on the top we have uh, what we call a business function. And business function is something that actually relates to how an organization typically works. And we'll come back to what the business functions are, but typically they are easy to map to what an organization can understand and how, how you're organized as an organization. Uh, under a business function, there are different uh, security practices. Uh, we'll give some examples later, uh, but in there are 15 uh, security practices in total in the SAM model. Uh, and then under every uh, security practices, we've defined two streams. And actually that concept of stream has been there since 2.0. It has created a bit of confusion. I would say quite some confusion because we, we get a lot of questions about what is a stream and is stream A more important than stream B. You just you should just think about it as a way to structure uh, the different activities uh, under a practice. Nothing more, nothing less. It's just a way to structure things. Uh, and then we're talking about activities in different uh, maturity levels. That was, that's what the model in its core is about. So let's make this a bit more concrete. So these are the five governance uh, uh, business functions in the SAM model. Uh, governance, 
everything around governance, design, implementation, verification, operations. The implementation business function is a new one since 2.0. So that's the one that was not, was not there before. And you will see under these business functions, there's always different security practices. So under design, for instance, there's a practice around threat assessment. There's a practice around security requirements and security architecture. You will see that in the model itself, it's quite broad and it encompasses all activities or practices that we think are important as, as a community in terms of uh, the, the broader uh, spectrum of dealing with software or secure software. So it's not only about coding, it's not only about testing, it's also about what are the standards that you have to use. It's about decommissioning software, it's about uh, what do you do when an incident happens on, on, on your software that you're running. So it's quite broad in, in, in its scope uh, in, in that sense. Right. Um, so as I said, under the security practice, we always have these streams. Uh, just one example, if you look at threat assessment, let me try to use this pointer. Yes. It, uh, right. Okay. Yes. Uh, if you look at threat assessment, for instance, there is a stream around application risk profile where we try to define what is the actual risk that this uh, piece of software has towards the, towards the organization. If it would be broken, what's the impact towards the organization? And there is an, uh, a stream around threat modeling uh, doing threat modeling on applications. So this is the, the overall uh, structure of the model. Uh, you've probably seen this before, um, and we'll give some more examples as we go along. Uh, but this is the overall structure structure of the model. Um, right. So um, the activities in the model, so there's lots of activities. They're uh, a bit structured like this. So every stream has activities and the activities are structured according to maturity levels. Let me try to show that a bit more visually. Um, so in these streams or in security practices, you have growing maturity. So we have three maturity levels, one, two, and three, and we define activities uh, indicating uh, actions that you should be doing or things that you should be doing in an organization with increasing maturity, difficulty to implement it in an organization. So levels one, two, and three. Typically level one is you're doing it at a basic level. Uh, uh, you, you're doing it already, but it might not be very structured, but you're doing some things in that, in that particular uh, dimension. Level two is you're doing it in a structured way. You can repeat it. You're doing it. It's defined. You're able to it's, it's like a solid practice. And level three is it's an optimized way of doing that particular uh, uh, problem in the organization. So really making sure that you regularly revisit what are you doing, does it make sense and so. That's the, the kind of the notion of these maturity levels. Um, so every stream has uh, these maturity levels and we have two streams. That's what I explained. Um, and so every stream then has per maturity level inactivity that you should be thinking about. Am I doing this in an organization or not? Does it make sense to do it in an organization or not? That's that's kind of the structure. All right, Seba. Yes. Okay. So um, so that's all good and fine. But how do we use this? Uh, so it's a maturity model. So how can we test where we are? Uh, and if you take, for instance, the security testing. Um, so we we have the both streams, but if we take one activity, uh, testing for software security controls, how do we know what level we are? So what we've done is for each of these activities, there's a question with a set of answers. And in level 2.0, uh, the, the, the new version, what we've done with these answers is they're not only in terms of quantity, uh, what are we doing and how good, how how and to what extent and what scope are we doing it, but also in terms of how good are we doing it? Are we reaching our objective? And that is something that is really uh, new uh, with version 2.0. The quality criteria are part of the model. So if we look here at, for instance, do we test applications for the basic security controls? Uh, for instance, do we have authentication in place, access control in place, um, input validation, like the basic stuff? Well, Either you do it or you don't. Eh? That's uh, obviously the, the answer that you have. Some of them, at least half of them, will give you a little bit of like um, more granular way of answering that. But first of all, the quality criteria are, well, you should definitely be, ver be verifying at least these kind of controls. Eh? That's, the, that's the part of that. And it should be whenever you change something, 
about those controls in your application. Those two aspects are really important. If you don't cover those quality criteria, it will always be no. So if you don't cover the quality criteria, you can't answer the question. And that's true for the whole model. And that is really something new in 2.0 and really critically important. Yes. So obviously you don't have to do that manually. Uh, there's lots of tools. Uh, we've uh, since long uh, we've uh, released a spreadsheet, both in Excel and in Google. It's I would say one of the best uh, best tools for doing these kind of things. Uh, more I would say user and development friendly. We also have tools like Samwise, which is a single page application which you can deploy yourself. Um, which has the same side of uh, kind of questions uh, and answers and where you can save that, export that, import that and so on. Uh, and also there's uh, free online tools as well. As for instance, the SAMI tool is quite a recent one written by uh, Aram and his team from Codific. Um, so there's lots of tools out there that you can that can help you to assess where you are. Yeah, join us. So that's, that's one way of uh, assessing. Um, another thing that we uh, that we have also added as part of the, the I would say the tool to SAMI itself, uh, or sorry, uh, SAM uh, itself is a PDF. Uh, since 2.0 was released two years ago, uh, we had the web we have the website uh, to use and consume and, and understand the model. Uh, but people still like I want to have a PDF to search the whole text or to read the whole text. Uh, one thing though, don't print it. It's 300 pages at this stage, so it's really good in a PDF format, um, and it's uh, and it's really usable for that. But uh, don't print it. Um, now, how do you implement some? Uh, obviously, it's not only about the assessment, but also about the impact. What are you going to want to do with it? So, and it's really meant to increase your maturity up until a level that's good enough for your risk profile and your application. So, the different steps, and they are explained in the model and also on the website, is. Well, obviously, you want to understand what your scope is going to be, how you're going to apply it. You assess against uh, against the model. You set your targets, like, okay, where do we need to be in terms of our business, in terms of our risk appetite? Uh, and then you define a plan. And uh, the tool that's provided provides you with a way of iteratively go growing towards that target maturity. And you're not going to get there in like six months. It's going to take you some time. So you start implementing that, and there's lots of guidance and pointers to lots of other OWASP tools to actually implement some of these uh, security activities. And then you start rolling it out with the different teams and you're in an iterative improvement, uh, I would say program or secure development lifecycle uh, project. So that's that's how you use and uh, use some. Um, in terms of uh, resources, uh, we uh, we, Create and, and and deliver everything from from GitHub. The the model itself, the website is uh, recreated every time when we change something. Um, all the all I would say supporting materials are available in a, in a Google Drive, and obviously the website allasam.org is where you can see and and use the model itself. Um, but that's, I would say that's some in a nutshell. Uh, we have also a full day of training if you want to have, uh, I would say, more details around this. Um, but in 2.1, we've uh, changed uh, quite some uh, some things. So um, maybe Bart. Yes, uh, thank you. <clears throat> um, so for us, uh, version 2.0 was really about redefining the model, making sure that we have like, again, a model that is uh, aligned with modern software development practices. That was for us the focus of 2.0. The focus of 2.1 is really about making sure that you as a community, you can actually use these models uh, in, in whatever context you are. So it's really about providing more guidance, more, uh, more tools, more everything that you can use to make it work, to make it work for you in your context. That's for us a bit the focus of 2.0. And we've been working on a number of, a number of elements, uh, for, for that matter. Now, I think uh, the, this model has proven that it works quite well because we see at the download rates, a lot of people are downloading it, are asking questions, are using it. Um, our hope is that we as a community can all work together on this so that 
it's not only about the project team pushing out the model, it's about everybody helping each other. And that's also about, uh, it's also one of the things that we're trying to achieve with the project, putting instruments in place to make sure that we can all help each other. And we, we, we have, we have Slack channels, but we have a specific form of guidance that we've defined, which we'll talk about later. But it's really about making sure that we can actually activate the community to help each other. I think that's really what we're, what we're aiming for. Uh, and it's an entire open source model for, for that matter as well. Uh, so a number of uh, elements that will be part of uh, version 2.1. Uh, first of all, we've uh, done actually a questionnaire uh, in the course of last year. So we've asked around to people, are you willing to uh, answer a bunch of questions to uh, uh, gauge, gauge a bit about, okay, where are you as, a, as an organization in terms of maturity? What is interesting? What works well? What doesn't work? We'll share uh, the outcomes of this, uh, some of the highlights of the outcomes uh, here, here as well today. Um, there's definitely a number of uh, frequently asked questions that we get uh, fr from time to time. We want to uh, make sure that we can uh, capture them and make them available on the website and other instruments. Uh, but we're, we're going to touch upon some of them also today. Um, in terms of, uh, so that's about uh, input from the community and towards the community. So we want to also make sure that we can provide more guidance. Guidance uh, for developers. So what we've done is we've actually... Uh, John DeLeo actually has, has created a kind of a roadmap for developers in OWASP SAM. Because if you're a developer, not everything that is in SAM might be relevant to you. And so you want to be focusing on particular elements, uh, particular uh, practices within the model. And so we've been, uh, based on, let's say, personas, persona of a developer, we've defined like a pathway for developers. That's something that we've created. We've started it with developers and we can create it for other personas as well on, on the way. If we see that we have enough traction on this, we might create it for other personas. Uh, also very important, uh, we've been working on mappings, uh, trying to map some towards other standards that might be relevant in your particular context. If you're uh, an organization that is uh, regulated by uh, in, in financial industry and you have to, uh, let's say, implement ISO 27K, okay, how can SAM help you to get to in ISO 27K in terms of application security? That's what these mappings are about. We'll, we'll discuss a bit more. And then finally, benchmarking. How do I compare as a company to other companies? That's probably the most, the most uh, popular question that we get um, and it's something that we're working on, uh, and we really want to, I, we want to share with you, uh, where we are on that. So let's dive into it. First of all, uh, the questionnaire. So we've launched this questionnaire course of, uh, I think it may last year, something like that, May, June. No, oh, October. No, 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 because we had the uh, results back in October, November. Okay, we launched it in October. Seba knows better than I. So we launched it in October, November last year. So okay, uh, we got um, uh, and we got back uh, quite some, quite some, uh, quite some results. Uh, so 157 participants uh, took part of this of uh, this questionnaire and provided us with with answers. Uh, for your information, good to understand that um, more than half of it were internal practitioners. So it's not external consultants like providing advice to a company, but really people within the organization trying to improve the organization itself, which is actually quite a nice result because back in the days, early, it was a lot of consulting that was being performed using this model. Now what we see is that the uptake of the model is more going towards within an organization, making sure that you can structure an organization. Actually, very interesting, um, very interesting uh, 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 trend. Um, we also saw that we, we, we got scores from the organization, different people. So I'm scoring, uh, one on governance, 2.1 on, on, uh, on, on design and so. And so we, we, uh, rated, we, we computed actually the average maturity level over all the scores that we got. And on average, for all these answers, we saw that the average maturity level was 1.2. It can, so it is the average. <laughs> <laughs> it is what it is. Um, I think it's, uh, well, we, we, we haven't done really an evaluation of what are the types of companies that we gotten in. Uh, you can, you can debate about it. I would, I would argue that somewhere between one and two is what I would expect. Uh, if you would have, uh, companies going, uh, beyond two, that means that you will have to invest quite a lot of money to get there. 
So I'm not that surprised uh, with with that average actually on on, on that. Yeah. Same. Okay. <laughs> right. Um, um, and actually, a lot of people are actually uh, interested in providing data for a potential benchmark. Because one of the things that we actually have been always yeah, struggling a bit is getting of data in our benchmark. Because if you want to provide you with data, you have to submit data to us. But a lot of companies are a bit... Um, yeah, uh, reluctant to share the data with us because if you share your state of maturity on AppSec, well, it might be, uh, well, from a PR perspective, uh, maybe considered a, a bad thing or so. Uh, so in the past, we, we've often had reactions that people are not very willing to share the data or it should be anonymous. Uh, but this turns out that actually quite a lot of people are actually very, uh, very interested in, in sharing the data. Uh, so let's maybe uh, dive a bit more into some statistics, but let's not uh, take too much time on that. Uh, maybe first of all, some improvements that were suggested. Uh, people wanted to have more guidance, which is actually what we did in 2.1. We'll talk about that. People were looking for mappings towards particular standards, which is what we did in 2.1. We started it. We'll share some of the details there. Uh, people were looking for uh, benchmarking data, which is what we're working on. It's not there, but actually we really we're, we're making progress. Uh, and we've been we've been well. It's it's one of our core focuses over the past years already. We know it's really important for for the community for all you guys. So we wanna we wanna really make sure that we can deliver that. Uh, all right. Uh, provide some for teams and products. So the idea is that, uh, that, that some itself is quite a broad framework. Is that and, it, and the the sum I, I was the sum for development teams is a little bit of an answer to that, but not completely. Because how do you apply it on a on a I would say smaller scope, like on a team or on a product scope? That's that's the question. All right. So I, I think we with version one we've 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 addressing a, a lot of the suggested improvements that we got, which is actually well we're we're here to serve you. I would say so. I think that's good news. All right. Uh, maybe some some statistics highlights. Uh, we're not going to spend too much time there. But so primary role of the respondents, uh, more than half were, were internal practitioners. So being in a software security group or so, uh, and then you have some other uh, uh, external practitioners or target of an assessment, uh, people trying to understand, okay, they're coming to audit me or assess me, or let me try to figure out what this model is about and I can answer the the, the questions that I'm getting. Uh, so, okay. Um, so in terms of some assessments that the people have been performing, the respondents have been performing, the majority of people have been uh, doing few assessments. So one to five, a few assessments. It might be once every year, maybe only one, we don't know, few, uh, a few assessments. Um, um, well, there are definitely also the, the targets probably have never done an assessment. That's probably around the 20%. Uh, that's, that's probably that. And then there are uh, some groups of people that have been doing more assessments, maybe in different business units of organization. If you have an organization with like uh, 10, 15 business units, you might want to do an assessment for every business unit. Uh, maybe it's a yearly recurring thing, or maybe it's consultants uh, having lots of different clients. That might, that might be the case. We don't, we don't know. Um, if you look at industry, um, you see that uh, actually a lot of industries score a bit similar. Only the technology industry uh, stands out in a lot of usage in the technology industry. Uh, there is one thing to mention, that is that we haven't, haven't clearly defined the financial services industry, uh, because actually we would expect uh, quite some usage there as well, because typically they're quite mature in terms of how they organize themselves in AppSec. Uh, but so if we count them together, uh, also in financial service, there's quite some uh, uptake on, on, on the sum on the sum model as well. But it was, it was actually because we had a couple of like default options, we just forgot to add finance in the default options. So some people added it like in other finance, so we aggregated them towards 19. But if we would have had it in the default options, it probably be higher. My best guess. That's the next survey. <laughs> All right. Uh, organization size of people that answered, um, it actually uh, varies quite, quite widely, all sorts of organizations, different, so different sectors, but also different sizes. Uh, that makes it actually interesting to see in terms of the average maturity level. Uh, well, it, it's, it's about different types of organizations, basically. All right. And then uh, what, what, how was some used? 
Um, uh, a lot of, um, well, the majority here are actually using SAM to build program uh, around SAM, and that's actually what it's meant for. Uh, you can use it to a single assessment, but actually the core uh, value of, of SAM is actually driving the improvements in your organization. So in that sense, we're very happy to see that people are using SAM for, uh, for, for that as well. Um, okay, then the overall average, we already discussed that, 1.2. Um, and then uh, it also seems to be the case that people are actually quite happy uh, in uh, in using SAM to in order to recommend it to people. So that's also that's good news. Uh, I don't know what's your what's your experience with it, but overall people seem to be seem to be happy. We're always looking for feedback to further improve it, but overall seems to be seems to be good. All right, then Seba, back to you. Okay, I'll, I'll do the, uh, All right, this one. But I want to also show it uh, on the on the website. So, all right, um, we we have a couple of questions that we get a lot, and uh, and one of these is so so we're looking to adopt uh, some, but okay, it's it's a framework. It's, it's so it has the advantage of being technology agnostic, but it also has the disadvantage of being technology agnostic. So you have to translate that towards okay, what does this mean for my cloud native development or my whatever stack that I'm going to develop on? Or so do you have more guidance on the, on the model? Is the maze is one of the questions, and yes, we have that now. And so what we've done is we've uh, released. Uh, what we call the stream guidance. So in the security practice, there's two streams. So in each of these streams, you've added particular guidance. Um, I'm going to show you where that is in, in a couple of seconds. But the kind of guidance that we're adding uh, continuously right now, but also I would say crowdsourcing. So uh, so if you have any experience with applying or using some, and you see there's missing guidance or you want to add something there, you can. And so there's an interactive form where you can add your own guidance proposal, which is going to be vetted and reviewed by the core team and then added to the model. Um, what kind of guidance? Projects, references within OWASP, obviously. Mappings we're going, uh, are there, best practices, tools, and so on. So if we go there, if we go to OWASP SAM, where's the guidance? Uh, obviously, you have here the the... the the guidance here, stream guidance, and there's a whole explanation of how that works, uh, which I would recommend to have a look at. We uh, make it a little bit bigger. Uh, you have the, the model, which is here on the website. If you take any of the streams or the security practice, for instance, education and guidance, uh, you have the, what we've shown you before. Uh, but uh, what is new in, in essence is that, for instance, under training and awareness, uh, you have uh, the, the, the description, you have the three maturity levels here, is if you scroll down, this is new since last December, uh, stream guidance. Uh, so, And the idea is that under this Google Doc, uh, which is uh, which I said is everything is available also in, uh, in our Google Drive, there are references, for instance, Education and guidance, what would you do without, for instance, OWASP Juice Shop? This is an on-purpose vulnerable web application that you can give to your developers and train them to discover them and to see what's wrong with that. So as an, ex as an example, OWASP Top 10, Security Shepherds, Security Knowledge Framework, API, Wrong Secrets, and so on. Mapping to standards and other models. So for instance, mapping it to BSIM 13, uh, this Education and uh, education awareness. There's conduct security awareness training in BSIM on the tree. So each of these streams will do now have these kind of guidance where you can scroll down, see what's in there. If you see there's something missing, uh, and you think it should be in there, next step what you should be doing is you go to this button and you say, okay, I want to add something here. And uh, you're going to have to add your email because we can provide you with some feedback. But then you select your stream. You select your categories, say what kind of levels it applies to, so title, URL, description, and why would this really be guidance. And this, and in this way, we're already getting in quite some suggestions. So just to be very clear, they're not automatically pushed in towards the guidance. We are reviewing them. There's some, uh, and then, then there's some uh, Google script after that, afterwards that regenerates, it regenerates those, uh, those pages. So that's, that's the guidance. And uh, we've been, uh, I, this is, I think, one of the really big steps that we've uh, made with uh, 2.1. So, 
So highly recommend it. And if again, if you see something is missing, uh, call us out on that. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Timo Pegel. Yes, definitely. Yes. There's some, uh, we, we've, uh, included Timo in the discussions for the SAM 2.0 model and there's some basic mappings. There's some, uh, there's some, so, so presentations on, on DSOM and, uh, and SAM. So yes, definitely. Yeah. Uh, another question we get a lot is, okay, so, uh, we started to do this, but do you know of an organization or a consultant who can help us with that? Now that's a little bit of a tricky question. Uh, because uh, we're all working in, in companies that actually do that. So I, obviously I can say our company is really the best, but that's not really how all us works. Uh, so how can we, I would say, uh, work around that? So we came up with a some practitioners list. And this is really like a list of practitioners that provide services around some. Uh, and there's a couple of like basic criteria. Right? Obviously they have to describe on somewhere on their public website what they're providing. It has to be related to OWASP some, otherwise we're not going to get on the list. Uh, and they have to ask it themselves. We're just going to check if the criteria are met, and then you're on the list. Uh, so that's that's actually how it works. And if you go to the to the practitioner uh, page here, if you go to community practitioners, you already see. Uh, so very clearly, uh, this does not in any way mean that we endorse, recommend, or favor any of them. It's just we are providing to you with an alphabetically ranked list of uh, of providers. Uh, so um, they just can say, okay, which kind of region or country is being served. We are always going to add like, okay, there are there certain contributors or sponsor levels attached to those kind of practitioners because I think it's fair to recognize on that. But if you look at, uh, at the list here, uh, there's already a growing list of organizations that provide help um with with implementing some so again if you if you are working of for an organization or that that provides some services and you're not on this list get in touch with us it's really easy to get on there um if obviously you're looking for uh, for help this is a good uh, good resource so that's uh, something we uh, we added there as well so I'm going to skip over this, uh, and then we, because I explained that, then in terms of extra guidance, so the sum for developers, or for development teams, that was indeed what John DeLeo created, and I'm going to skip over these a little bit uh, faster because we want to leave time for Q and A. Um, but the idea is that there is what they what what John calls the critical path uh, through sum for a development team. Uh, because you can't do everything at the same time at once. That's not going to work. But there's a really logical way of going through uh, through some b b based on basic understanding of the threats, making sure you capture requirements. Obviously, you need to build and deploy. Otherwise, it's not going to work. And then testing. But not only like dump testing with a tool, but also requirements-based testing that you meet what the security requirements actually were uh, were about. So this is what the critical part is. Um, there's a couple of, obviously, each of these streams are there, are being explained. They're very logical. Uh, the, the threat assessment is understanding the risk profile of your application and creating a basic threat model for your application. Here is some subliminal, like, extra slide that, that, that Shunning from Threat Modeling Connect made me add to it. But Threat Modeling Connect is a community that, uh, that works on threat modeling. So it's a uh, highly, well, I'm one of the founding members. So I had to put it in there as well. Mm -hmm. uh, so if you want to know about threat modeling, that's, that's in here as well. Security requirements, understanding what, uh, what you need to do. Uh, and but not, not only in your own software, but also in any piece of software that you're using, software suppliers, yeah, uh, and how to deal with them, uh, is included in there as well. Requirements driven testing, uh, which we just covered in the earlier example. And then secure builds, and obviously source code analysis is important there. Uh, secure deployment, making sure that you can automatically and repeatedly deploy and so on. So it's not rocket science, but it's just to make sure that you, uh, you have that and that you have like a really depend, like a good system of injecting secrets and so on. And then testing with tools, uh, but also through manual testing. So that's the, the critical part 
uh, of for for development teams there are some pillars some foundational activities that support that and those are uh, understanding what your compliance and regulation uh, requirements are education and guidance keeping track of everything that's defects defects will pop out of any of the security practices and defect management is uh, on uh, on tracking and, uh, and measuring those and then the whole uh, patching and updating of your full stack and um, and obviously operational uh, management is involved there as well so that's in a i would say five minute overview uh capturing like a one hour plus presentation that john also has which we're going to fully record and make available as well uh, but that's a little bit of a preview there uh, which brings us to the to the next thing and that was the the mapping part uh, <clears throat> yes some more words on on the mappings so again the question from community was can we have more support in uh, linking uh, some to another standard that we have to that we have to implement in organization like uh, NIST SSDF or like ISO 27K or so these are the the mappings for us so what we've done is we actually uh, have defined a number of standards uh, that we actually want to provide in terms of mappings to help you uh, meet a particular standard in your organization that you have to meet by using OWASP SAM. That's the idea of the mapping. It's really to help you. Um, so we've been doing this already for uh, several standards. We've been working on that and we've just actually released the mapping for the NIST SSDF framework. Uh, uh, version 1.1 1 1 for NIST SSDF was released uh, February last year, I think, if I remember correctly. So we've been working uh, with over the past couple of months to actually really define um, the, well, the relation between all the activities in NIST SSDF and OWASP SAM. So several people from, uh, from our core team have been really working on that, uh, a lot. Uh, what you actually see in the, the mapping, uh, is that NIST SSDF is a bit more generic in terms of types of activities that it has. And we really try to make clear all the, a bit more concrete activities and security practice that might be able to help out uh, to to achieve that. Uh, the, so we also have been in contact with NIST to discuss uh, the mapping. We've proposed the mapping with them, and so we're actually also really in in, in discussion with them to make sure that it's it perfectly aligns with what they have in mind in, uh, for NIST SSDF model. So actually, this is what the mapping uh, looks like. Uh, the idea is not, uh, it's not readable, first of all, so, so apologies for that. The idea is not really to go into the detail of that, but actually it's, the mapping is available for you to work, to work with. Um, and so what we've done is we've, uh, done the mapping from NIST SSDF to OWASP OWASP SAM and also the inverse, depending on how you want to work with it. And for every mapping, there's actually, um, an, uh, a, a relationship type, meaning that is it a one-to-one -one mapping? Is the other activity containing part of the, the, the other part? And, and so it's really very, very cl quite clear. And I would say even almost formal into what the relation is, is about. So it should be, it, it really help you out in, in, in using OWASP SAM in, in support of NIS SSDF. I think maybe I can add to that. Uh, maybe who of you is, is impacted by SSDF list? Uh, if, yeah. Not impacted, but trying to follow. Yes, trying to follow. But it's uh, certainly in US. There's lots of organizations. The they have to follow SSDF. Yeah, exactly. Are you exactly. in trouble? You're, yeah. if, if you want to ever, I would say, sell, to, sell something to the US government, this is mandatory. And you're not going to get uh, away with not uh, not providing software that's not in line with SSDF. Uh, but providing the full mapping provides you with the possibility, if you're already using some, to say, okay, it's not that hard. We just map what we're doing on SSDF, and there we are. Yeah. That's, that's the and actually, it was also interesting to see that NIST SSDF actually suggests the use of OWASP SAM yes. uh, in the model itself, but it was never made very clear on, on how it has to, actually has to be done. So what we wanted to do with this mapping to really make it very clear, okay, this is how SAM can help you in getting uh, um, in line with... Uh, uh, compliant with NIST SSDF. Yeah, because yeah. it's very basic. It's just that they've laid down some procedures and then go do it yourself. Exactly, exactly. And so we see that SAM is, is much more concrete in the types of things that activities that you can do. And that's actually what this mapping is about to really help you 
it's a bit like the guidance that we provide as well. We try to give you the instruments to to yeah to to organize yourself in 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 in, in upsec in organization. So yeah, all right. Uh, so that's for Nice SDF. It has been released a couple of weeks ago. Uh, so it's there for 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 all of you. It's downloadable. At the same time, we're also working on the ISO mapping. Um, and the open CRE mapping as well, uh, Siba, you, 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 you mentioned before. Actually, I wasn't even aware of that. So that's also new to me, but good, good to hear. So actually lots of activities are, are ongoing there. Uh, in any case, if any of these models is of particular interest to you, uh, we'd be very happy and help, uh, grateful if you could also contribute mappings to the, to the model. Uh, because actually everybody can benefit from this. So if you actually have, are working a lot on, let's say, a Microsoft SDL in organization and you have to do any way the study of, uh, on how you can use OWASP SAM to actually meet Microsoft SDL, we would be very grateful if you could just contribute back to the, to the project. That way everybody can, 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 uh, can benefit from it. Okay. That's about the mappings. And then benchmarking, just looking at the time, 10 more minutes. So we'll have to uh, keep that uh, a, a bit short. But uh, so we, one of the core questions that we always get is, um, is there any benchmarking data available? How do I compare to other organizations? Um, we've been working on, the, on this already quite some time. Uh, and we actually had uh, some limited benchmarking for version 1.5 available. Uh, but it was not very consumable. You had to contact the project uh, team to actually get some data out. And so it was not very open and, and shareable. So what we really want to change now is with version 2.1 uh, and going, going forward is to, to provide you with a benchmarking tool that you can able, that you can submit data, but also actually get, get analysis out of it, out of it as well. So you can actually compare your organization towards other organizations of the same size, the same sector, the same geographical location. That's really the idea. Um, so there's a couple of people in our core team really working on that. Um, have been, have been defining the, the data model. How can we store the data? How can we store it anonymously? How can we make sure that we can update data? All these types of things. And actually there were quite some, yeah, non-trivial problems to overcome to actually set this up. Um, and right now we're in a state where actually we're, we're, we're testing. Yeah, that's also something. Um, we're, we're actually testing, testing out, uh, initial versions of, uh, a, a, a data model and a database and some tool to, 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 uh, to, to be able to ingest data into that, into that model. Um, uh, Brian Glass, uh, from our core team is working that together with Maxim Bala. Uh, and actually the goal is to develop a tool to be able to ingest easily, uh, ingest easily data into it. And actually getting data can come from different sources. Eh? It might be the case that if you're actually, uh, com completing a, an analysis from a spreadsheet, there might be an option to say, okay, are you willing to share this data? If so, yes, click yes. And there might be some, uh, some, some, some data sharing going on. Uh, we might be putting up an, uh, an, 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 a data API for you to be able to just connect some kind of a REST API. There might be different ways of, of getting there. Uh, but the idea is that, uh, that we gather as much as possible data set from everywhere and that we share it back to the community because that's what everybody's, everybody's asking for. And so that's one of the core priorities for us for, for, for this year. Um, I'm going to skip this. Um, and that is what I, yeah, that's what I, what I already discussed. Um, uh, if you are, if you are, uh, interested in helping out the project, well, this is definitely one of the paths where we can act, use extra, extra resources, extra cycles in terms of development, in terms of testing it out, in terms of all sorts of things. But, but, uh, but we can definitely, uh, have some, uh, make use of some more helping hands. The idea is that we want to, uh, publish of a first analysis in the course of 2023. Maybe not all data sets can be, uh, are maybe not open yet, but at least that that we give something back to the community in terms of an analysis of what we have, what we have gathered in terms of data sets. All right. Um, I think that's it around the benchmarking. And then I think we're, uh, kind of rounding it up. Um, so, um, the OWASP SAM is really an, um, an, a project where we're actually working with quite a, quite an extensive core team of more than 10, uh, 10 people around something like that. More. Um, more than that. Uh, the idea is that we are, well, preparing as much as we can from the core team 
but we really want to connect the community together in terms of input, your input, your questions, what works well, what doesn't work, how can we help you, and how can you contribute to the model as well? Because we think the strength of the model is about making sure that, uh, well, if you have a model that's usable everywhere and that you can learn from each other, then the entire community will, will gain from it, will benefit from it. And that's how we want to, how we want to go forward and grow, uh, uh, in this. So in that sense, uh, we are always looking for community feedback. Uh, we're also community driven in the sense that, for instance, in the guidance, we're looking for your input in that guidance. If your input can be valuable for other people uh, working with the model, so that will always uh, be beneficial. Um, yes. And maybe some topics that we're thinking about taking up in later stages is, um, uh, well, the benchmark report and surveys. Uh, we want to do that on a yearly basis, uh, depending on how much data we can, we are able to ingest, but, uh, having a, a yearly, like, well, questionnaire to see how does the community think about the model and where can we improve is always a good thing. Uh, we want to build integrations with tools for the benchmark, as I explained before, with, uh, with Excel or, or, uh, with online tools like the, the tool from Codific or others. Uh, if you can, if we can automatically uh, get the data into our benchmarking, that would actually be a great, great thing. Um, we're looking more into uh, project integrations with different OS projects. We'd like to think that we're a relevant project in the OS community. Uh, we also see that uh, most of the other projects are actually can fit under some uh, activity or security practice that we're actually providing in, 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 in the model. So in that sense, you can look at it as OSPSAM as kind of an umbrella project in that sense. So we try to connect as much as possible with other OS projects to make sure that yeah the things that we're doing makes, makes sense. Uh, we're thinking about building APIs for SAM, can be benchmarking APIs, can also be about the model itself. Actually, our entire model is specified in YAML files, and well, whatever you see in terms of the Excel and the website and so on, it's also automatically generated. So we're thinking about building like open open APIs or open data APIs to query the model, query data, uh, all these kind of things. Uh, it's future future music, but still. And something that we're also uh, thinking about is providing more enterprise support because what we see is you've, if you're using the model in an enterprise and you're doing a lot of these assessments, like you have, uh, like, uh, 15 teams that you wanna, wanna, uh, evaluate regularly, then we currently don't really have good instruments to support that. So we really want, are thinking about, okay, how can we provide better enterprise dashboards to manage a lot of assessments, uh, to consolidate assessments, uh, define roadmaps and so on an enterprise level. There currently our support is quite limited, I would say. So that's also some of the ideas. Mm -hmm. And, and and something also wanted to add. Eh? So we uh, the, the some security labels. I uh, think of this uh, if you're looking at your refrigerator, you have the A B C or your food like A B C uh, or the car with the risk like the, the car crash uh, stars and so on. I think this is Jeff Williams that all that I think more than ten years or fifteen years ago dreamt of having like a software security label. Uh, so and I think some has the. Uh, at least like the foundations to provide us with some kind of software security label. Uh, so that's, that's something we are definitely also thinking of. Uh, that would definitely be helpful to compare software uh, against each other. So that's, uh, but the most important question is also how can we, uh, how can you help us? Uh, how can you have, how can we help you to increase the impact uh, of, uh, of, of making software se more secure? And that's the, the basic question. So if you're interested, uh, in, in, in contributing, contact us. There's more than enough ways to get in touch with us. So no excuses there. Mm -hmm. Uh, so there's, uh, obviously we have discussions on our GitHub. We have the Slack channel on, um, on the project. We have a, a newsletter. Uh, which is, uh, has uh, no spam, uh, but every time when we have a new release, a new blog post, uh, you will get an email, so uh, register for that. Uh, we've also recently st started up a meetup um, group because every month we have a community call, so every second Wednesday of the month actually we do a community call, uh, which is open to everybody to uh, to join. So uh, Every second Wednesday, right? Every second Wednesday. Wednesday yeah. 
It's I know, okay. I thought you said Tuesday. But I, I it's Wednesday. Wednesday. Okay, it's Wednesday. Wednesday. Yeah. So, <laughs> okay. anyway, it's all on OASPSound.org. So, uh, join us there. Uh, obviously, we're also very grateful for the sponsors. If you like it and you can convince your boss or you have your own company and you use this, obviously, we welcome you very much to uh, support this. Um, and that's it, really, for us. The other crowds would next say for us. So yes, but we're uh, just in time. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you.